Hello again. Uh, we're working with an introduction to complex numbers here. And basically, uh, what a complex number, well, well, an aspect of a complex number is uh, the unit i, where it's equal to the uh, negative square, uh, square root of negative 1, pardon me, and how we can apply that to regular problems. Uh, if you're an electrical engineer, you, obviously you use it. Uh, you can also use it when you use direction, magnitude, etc. It does have applications more so in physics and calculus. Not so much in algebra, we just kind of solve it and that's pretty much it. But it actually is pretty cool if you do start using it, which is, in my opinion, very cool. So, how, how do we go about doing this? Well, uh, if you remember solving square roots, you might have done a problem like this before, where it's the square root of negative i, I sorry, negative 9, and your teacher says, ah, it's uh, no real solution. Yeah, it's no real solution, but there is an imaginary solution. Uh, how you do that is very simple. If you want to figure out the square root of a negative number, basically what you do is you uh, take negative 1 times 9. Now, whenever you're taking the square root of negative 1, it's the equivalent of i, so you pull that out. And the square root of 9, then, is 3, and you rewrite it as 3i. It kind of takes care of problems where we're working with negative square roots, at least in algebra. Uh, it does have other uses, but we're not going to explore those just yet. What I'd rather do is explore the relationship between i, i squared, i cubed, and i to the fourth. And you do use this when you use complex numbers. So I got i equals square root of negative 1. It's actually that. That's the definition. It's as simple as that. Uh, we work in groups of 4 here. And then the cycle just repeats itself. So I have i squared next, which is basically like taking the square of negative 1, uh, excuse me, squaring the square root of negative 1. That cancels. i squared, by definition, is negative 1. i cubed, on the other hand, is uh, that, and then multiplied by the square root of negative 1 again. So, it's negative 1, and then with the square root of negative 1 left over. Uh, that's a little confusing, but it's still pretty cool. We don't actually call it that. Uh, we call it negative i. So, uh, to make it a little bit less confusing, this is i, and then that's just negative 1 times i. So, it's equal to negative part negative i. That's how we basically simplify it even further. We don't leave it like this because this just looks absolutely terrible. And then i to the fourth is uh, this, oh sorry, pardon me, this times this times this times this uh, four times. But if you want to make it even easier, it's just i squared times i squared. So it's negative one times negative one, which is equal to one. And that's a definition of it. And then i to the fifth is the square root of negative 1, i to the 6th is negative 1, i to the 7th is negative i, i to the 8th is 1. It repeats in cycles of 4. So it's really quite cool, in my opinion. Using that little bit of information, which uh, is something that you should memorize, at least the first four, the other ones you just divide out, it's not bad at all. Uh, let's try to do this one. So I got negative 2 times 5, which is negative 10, and I have i times i, which is i squared. But i squared, by definition, is negative 1. So it's negative 10 times negative 1, which comes out to 10. So that's an application of complex numbers. This one's a little different. If I want to go ahead and do this uh, really quickly, and I'll show you, uh, so it hopefully it makes as much sense as possible. Negative 1 times 2 times 5 will all equal negative 10 times negative 1 times 3 times 5. You can do 5 times 3 if you want to. Okay, so that's i, and then I got root 2 times root 5 times, that's i, times root 3 times root 5. Root 5 times root 5 is 5. i times i is i squared. that one out without actually doing it right. And then you can't do anything with this, so they just go back inside. They're uh, not really respected there. i squared by definition is negative 1, so it's 5 times negative 1, which is negative 5, root 6. We'll add complex numbers, multiply complex numbers, and then do a division of complex numbers, which is most of the time ignored, but you use it uh, using the, uh, you solve it using the conjugate. Uh, with that said, I hope that's helpful in terms of an introduction. Have a good day for now. Goodbye.